the waste land man sibilam quidem cumis ego ipse oculis meis vidi in ampola tendere et cum ili poeri decarent sibula tifeles respondeva ila apophanein thalo. The burial of the dead, April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dried tuber. Summer surprised us, coming over the Starnberger Zee with a shower of rain, we stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the hot garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour. And when we were children, staying at the archdukes, my cousins, he took me out on a sled and I was frightened. He said, Marie, Marie, hold on tight. And then we went. In the mountains, there you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. <laughs> what are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man, you cannot say or guess. For you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats, and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock. And I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Frisch weht der Wind der Heimat zu, mein irisch Kind, wo weilst du? You gave me hyacinths first a year ago. They called me the Hyacinth Girl. Yet when we came back, late from the Hyacinth Garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak, and my eyes failed. I was neither living nor dead, but I knew nothing, looking into the heart of light, the silence. <laughs> Madame Sesostris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold. <laughs> Nevertheless, it would be the wisest woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. Up here? Said she... It's your card, the drowned Venetian saber. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look! Here is Belladonna, the lady of situations, the lady of the rocks. And here's the man with three staves. And here the wheel. And here's the one-eyed merchant. And this card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back. I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hand man. Be a death by water. I see crowds of people walking round in a ring. Thank you. If you see dear Mrs. Equitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal City. Under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many, I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Flowed up the hill and down King William Street, to where St. Mary Woolmoth kept the hours, with a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew, and stopped him, crying, Stetson! You who were with me in the ships at Melee, that corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, Ibertrake Lecter, mon semblable, mon frère. A game at chess. The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on the marble, where the glass held up by standards wrought with fruited vines, from which a golden cupidon peeped out, another hid his eyes behind his wing, 
doubled the flames of seven-branched candelabra, reflecting light upon the table as the glitter of her jewels rose to meet it from satin cases poured in rich profusion. In vials of ivory and coloured glass, unstoppered, lurked her strange synthetic perfumes. Unguent, powdered or liquid, troubled, confused, and drowned the scents in odours. Stirred by the air that freshened from the window, these ascended in, fattening the prolonged candle flames, flung their smoke into the laquaria, stirring the pattern on the coffered ceiling. Huge seawood fed with copper burned green and orange, framed by the coloured stone in which sad light a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantle was displayed, as though a window gave upon the seaward scene the change of Philomel by the barbarous king so rudely forced. Yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues. Jug, jug, to dirty ears. Another withered stumps of time were told upon the walls. Staring forms leaned out, leaning, hushing the room enclosed. Footsteps shuffled on the stair, under the firelight, under the brush, her hair spread out in fiery points, glowed into words, then would be savagely still. My nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak. What are you thinking of? What thinking? What? I never know what you are thinking. Think. I think we are in Rats Alley where the dead men lost their bones. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head? But oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag. It's so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am and walk the street with my hair down so. What shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four. And we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince me words, I said to myself, Hurry up, please, it's time. Now, Albert's coming home. Make yourself a bit smart. You want to know what you've done with that money he give you to get yourself some teeth? He did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and get another set, he said. I swear I can't bear to look at you. And no more can't I, I said. And think of poor Albert. He's been in the army four years. He wants a good time. And if you don't give it him, there's others will, I said. Oh, is there, she said. Something of that, I said. Well, if you don't like it, you can get on with it, I said. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, it won't be for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique. And I have only 31. Mm. I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off, she said. <laughs> She's had five already and nearly died of young George. Kevin said it'd be all right, but I've never been the same. You are a proper fool, I said. Well, if Albert won't leave you alone, there it is, I said. What do you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please, it's time. Well, that Sunday Albert was home, and they had not gammon, and they asked me in to dinner to get the beauty of it off. Hurry up, please, it's time. Hurry up, please, it's time. Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, man. Good night. Ta -ta. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> the fire, Salmon. The river's tent is broken. The last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown land unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. 
The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or other testimony on summer night. The nymphs are departed, and their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed and left no addresses. By the waters of Le Mans, I sat down and wept. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back in a cold blast, I hear the rattle of the bones and chuckles spread from ear to ear. A rat crept softly through the vegetation dragging its slimy belly on the bank, while I was fishing in the dull canal on a winter evening round behind the gas house, musing upon the king my brother's wreck and on the king my father's death before him. White bodies naked on the low, damp ground, and bones cast in a little low, dry garret, rattled by the rat's foot only year to year. But at my back from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors, which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Porter in the spring. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and on her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water. Oh, ces voix d'enfants chantant dans la coupole. Twit, twit, twit. Jug, 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 jug. So rudely forced. Hello. Unreal city, under the brown fog of a winter noon, Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant, unshaven with a pocket full of currants, CIF, London, documents at sight, <laughs> asked me in demotic French to luncheon at the Cannes Street Hotel, followed by a weekend in the Metropole. At the violet hour, when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi throbbing, waiting, I, Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives, old man with wrinkled female breasts, can see at the violet hour, the evening hour that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea, the typist home at tea time, clears her breakfast, lights her stove, and lays out food in tins. Out of the window, perilously spread, her drying combinations touched by the sun's last rays. On the divan are piled, at night her bed, stockings, slippers, camisoles, her head stays. I, Tiresias, old man with wrinkled dugs, perceived the scene and foretold the rest. I, too, awaited the expected guest. He, the young man Carbuncular arrives, a small house agent's clerk with one bold stare, one of the low on whom a shawl sits as a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. The time is now propitious as he guesses, the meal is ended, she is bored and tired, endeavours to engage her in caresses which still are unreproved, if undesired. Flushed and decided he assaults at once, exploring hands encounter no defence. His vanity requires no response that makes a welcome of indifference. And I, Tiresias, of course I would all enacted on this same divan or bed. I, who have sat by Thebes below the wall and walked among the lowest of the dead. Bestows one final patronizing kiss and gropes his way, finding the stairs unlit. She turns and looks a moment in the glass, hardly aware of her departed lover. Her brain allows one half-formed thought to pass. Well, now that's done, and I'm glad it's over. But a lovely woman stoops to folly, and paces about her room again alone. She smooths her hair with automatic hand, and puts a record on the gramophone. <laughs> this music crept by me upon the water. And along the strand up in Victoria Street. Oh, city 